Welcome viewers to another episode of Sky is the Limit. My name is Fahim Bangush. Today, we are in the compound of Comstec. What's Comstec? Comstec is the OIC Standing Committee on Science and Technology. It's a beautiful compound here that we're in. And we will be meeting the head of Comstec today. And I will tell you the name and his designation and everything about him because the whole program is about him today. About him and about Comstec. And we will get into details about that and uh, we will also get to know all the functions of Comstec. We will get to know so many things that we don't know already and uh, definitely it's going to be very knowledgeable for uh, both you and for us. So, shall we? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Too. How are Thank you? Wonderful. Mashallah, welcome to Comstack. Thank you so much. Delighted to have you. Lovely. Well, viewers, this is the guest that we were talking about. This is Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhry, and we will be talking to him about the whole organization and about him, his personal life, and his goals and future, whatever plans he has for the future. So, shall we, sir? Very welcome. Comstec is a standing committee which is represented by 57 ministers of science and technology and chaired by the President of Pakistan. Right. And our primary role is to promote science and technology based social economic development in the country. So you can see that in this exhibition area which we use for exhibition of technology, we can also see uh, every country has its four profiles. So we serve as an observatory uh, for science and technology related development in these states. So uh, every year, for all 57 states, individually we monitor their progress in science and technology, what achievement they have, what are the needs, or what are the areas in which you have, they have developed capacity. And based on that, then we plan for, for, for future. Okay. In this whole process, our emphasis is largely on least developed countries. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in, in, uh, in the Muslim world, there are a lot of, unfortunately, dissymmetric. You see, some countries are developing while other countries are very lagging behind. Yeah. And in that case, inter-Islamic cooperation is extremely important, and this is the role of uh, Comstec to develop that. And because of the Comstec efforts, you can see many uh, work and Absolutely, we were able to develop science and technology policy for many work countries. I see. Yeah. So it's a beautiful compound that we got to see while coming upstairs here, sir. Uh, we would like, definitely like to know, we and our views, as to you right now are the coordinator general of Comstec, but we would also like to know uh, where you were born and your early years, and did you ever think that you'd perhaps one day become the uh, coordinator general of Comstec? Uh, I was born in Karachi uh, in a family of uh, four children. So I have uh, three younger brothers and sisters and my father was actually working for the government for quite some time. Right. We used to live in a very serene place uh, in Malir Kent. So we had a very wonderful childhood and lots of very good activities which we were able to do. Of course I was very fortunate to have a very good quality education. And then, of course, at that point of time, my parents really wanted me to, you know, uh, become a scientist. So my career started as a, as a science student, and then I was able to benefit from very good institutions, travel all across the world, went to some of the top institutions of the world. And when I came back, I joined uh, University of Karachi as uh, an assistant professor moved to become a professor of organic chemistry and then 
uh, I joined this research center, which is called International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences. And from that uh, particular position as a researcher, I was able to develop lots of linkages. And I think this is one of the reasons why uh, Excellency the President has uh, selected me for the position of the Coordinator General for Comstock. And how long has it been that you're Coordinator General here? It's almost like two years. Two years, uh, right. And I've been extremely busy because uh, uh, this is an organization which has a big mandate, uh, a lot of responsibilities, and really want to use this organization as science diplomacy uh, institution for the country. So we have a great mission, and uh, we're looking forward to have uh, uh, Comstock becoming uh, one of the premier organizations in the world. And uh, are you married? Yes. MashaAllah. And what about the children? Uh, I have... Uh, Four children, two sons and two daughters, and Vashala uh, very happy that they are extremely intelligent, uh, very hard working, and they do have. If they have your genes, they must be intelligent. I love that. So, have they also gone into the field of science? My daughter is a medical doctor, and she is uh, in public health right now, uh, so she has this tendency of developing lots of. Uh, interesting uh, research-based questions. The others are in different fields. My son is actually a banker. Uh, uh, younger daughter, she's uh, in engineering field. Uh, she's working in the field of textile engineering. And the younger one, uh, the youngest one, is in media science. Also, another question that comes to mind. Uh, being a resident of Karachi and uh, being a scientist is not something that's really common in Pakistan. Uh, how did you come up with that idea, or your father for that matter, that you should be a scientist living in Pakistan? Because often when we hear about research, it's coming from Johns Hopkins University, Yale, Harvard, uh, we don't really, you know, consider uh, that we perhaps could produce a scientist of our own. Uh, the fact is that, you know, uh, this nation is extremely intelligent. Our young people have a lot, lot of potential uh, and they're bright and bold and I'm, sh I'm sure that if we provide them opportunity, they can become scientists, scholars of all kind. And uh, I was very fortunate that my parents uh, gave me this, uh, you know, uh, training of, uh, of learning. Uh, they uh, they were very, very supportive. So I developed this uh, habit of inquiry, you know. So I, was, uh, I was always curious. I was a curious learner. I wanted to learn about everything, about universe, about animals, about climate, about people, about health, uh, from very childhood. And that has been the foundation of my career, which uh, eventually made me a scientist. Now, I was in uh, top inst institution of the world. I was initially went to Pennsylvania State University, then I was at Cornell. Uh, I worked at UCSD, University of California, at San Diego, and then decided to come back and serve Pakistan. And this was, you know, right from the beginning, my objective was that to benefit from the best institution, then come back to Pakistan and serve Pakistan. I don't know. That's, that's awesome because not many people do that and that's why we have so much brain drain out in the, the country because people just want to leave. And uh, also, um, uh, while I was reading your profile, it said chemistry, organic chemistry, uh, biochemistry. Why the interest in chemistry? You see, everything around us and within us is chemistry. I mean, how you look like or how you think what are the diseases, what is health, our emotions, our anxiety, everything is chemistry. Understanding chemistry is actually understanding nature. And uh, when I was selecting, of course, discipline, chemistry uh, fascinated me a lot because uh, the explanation at a molecular level of everything, from natural phenomena to disasters to health, uh, to diseases, uh, to people, to genes, everything is actually related to chemistry. Lovely, lovely. So now uh, that you're heading Comstech, um, 
also enlighten us on the exact job nature of Comstec in Pakistan. Okay, Comstec is an international organization. This is the only interdisciplinary organization in Pakistan. And this is an OSC institution which is hosted by Pakistan. So it was uh, established in 1981. And uh, being Pakistan, being a host institution, is responsible of supporting Comstec. And we have been very fortunate to get full support from the President of Pakistan, from the Presidential Secretariat, from Ministry of Science and Technology, from Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And our primary job is to work with 57 member states and 57 member states in four different continents from South America to, you know, Africa, Asia, uh, Europe, and the uh, primary objective of Comstec is to develop science and technology in these countries because science and technology are the driver of change. Yes. Today, if you look into the socio-economic development, this is primarily based on technology and uh, cooperation between the Muslim countries to develop science and technology and then to use it for the benefit of people, that is where Comstock uh, play extremely important role. No, that's true, because the era that we're living in right now, I think that's wholly and solely driven by technology, even starting from the mobile phones and then your computers and then digitization of everything that we see on a daily basis. Yes, that's... Oh, and, and I mean, so many other fields that I might not know of, definitely. So, um, also, uh, how do you spend your day when you come to the office? Uh, you see, we start our day very early, and it's always extremely busy because uh, we have to work at different levels. We have our own uh, staff who are working at different programs, and of course, we need to have lots of meetings with the ambassadors, with the government officials, and every day is a very exciting day because we are working on various initiatives. We see the impact of what Comstec is doing. We would like to see Comstec playing a crucial role in the Muslim world and to, to use Comstec as a primary instrument of Pakistan science diplomacy. So there are a lot of work which has to be done. And we have a wonderful team of people, you know. We have lots of people and uh, especially our senior officials with whom I have a meeting now, mm -hmm. uh, that is the core and brain of the concept. Lovely. And uh, like, what would be the strength, if I ask, of this organization right now? The strength of this organization is family two, that we uh, are capable of uh, interacting with lots of institutions and networking is the greatest strength of uh, Comstec because we have uh, linkages in all 57 countries and we work with institutions, we work with individuals, we work with universities, government officials. Second is that we have been very innovative, you know. We uh, know that we have limitation of funding, that uh, very often the, uh, the Muslim countries do not really spend uh, on science and technology in that case, we are trying to uh, trying to develop programs which are of low cost and high impact. For instance, we are working with the youth and giving them opportunity of developing their innovation. We have a technology portal. We work with women scientists. We work with uh, institutions in Africa and these developed countries. So we have been extremely innovative uh, over the years and. That these two strengths uh, make us uh, more impactful in different areas. Right, we will get into in-depth discussions regarding that as well, but now since you said you had a meeting, so we'll let you uh, head that meeting, and uh, we will be right back. You stay tuned to B2B World. Diversifying the sources uh, where uh, and how they can be supported uh, 
from the international organization. So, Comstock's uh, basic instrument of implementation of key science and technology indicators uh, can become more effective. The meeting that you had on 20th December, they have all been informed to reorganize themselves. Indeed, uh, some of the networks are already managing their resources very well. They have started uh, doing projects with the European Union and with uh, even North America. So, Jadish, have a, this is quite a meeting. I mean, you do take your stuff very seriously, don't you? You see, we, our strategy is to actually uh, not only that we plan, but we implement them very seriously. And we've been very fortunate that we have some of the brightest people working for this organization. Because that's where it makes a difference, because many people come and it's just mincing words and, uh, as they call it, uh, just saying things out loud and not doing stuff, not doing any action about it. So that's the different thing that you said, we implement things. And that's something different that I have come across in Pakistan as well, because many people just say things out loud, but we don't get to see action. See, uh, Comstack uh, is a mission-oriented organization. And this was made for, with, uh, uh, with the understanding that Pakistan, which has some of the finest research institutions, some bright individuals, should be able to benefit uh, other Muslim countries. We feel that we uh, have a very serious task ahead of us. There is a global level. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You know, in 57 countries, this is the second largest group uh, after the United Nations. So we have a whole canvas and we have to be uh, very focused and we need to make sure that we implement what we, uh, you know, decide. So implementation is a great strength of this organization and we were, over the years we were able to implement many projects which benefited many Muslim countries. That's amazing. The more I'm getting to know about the organization, the more fun I'm having. Now, we'll also let you people have fun. So, I can't help but notice that there are pictures of Nobel Prize laureates here. Uh, who are they and in what fields have they excelled? Nobel Prize is the highest award in science and technology. And Nobel Prizes are actually given in the field of physiology and medicine, chemistry, physics, and others. Uh, what we have done in Comstock uh, that we have actually placed the photographs of uh, Nobel laureates, and these are our inspiration. Our inspiration, inspiration is that we really want our uh, youth to be inspired from them and to eventually achieve this high award for for the Muslim world, inshallah. So, for instance. Uh, this is uh, the photograph of Professor Young, and he received a Nobel Prize in 2017. And he actually worked in the field of physiology and medicine. And uh, what he has discovered was largely uh, the mechanism of action of uh, circadian cycle, you know. What is the impact of sleep cycle? Uh, what actually happens when people do not really follow the normal routine of life and what kind of physiological impact they would have. So he was able to decipher the whole process at a molecular level. I'm uh, sure. Nature and health. I'm sure, I'm sure. Right. Shall we say? Sure. Very bright young people who are actually responsible of uh, the actual uh, projects which Comstock is carrying out. Please have a seat. And then online we have some foreign scholars from different countries who are currently in Pakistan under different Comstock programs. So it's a blend of uh, what uh, Comstock is doing uh, from the headquarters and what are some of the results of, uh, of Comstock activities. One of it that we have been able to 
to facilitate the mobility of scholars from different countries to different institutions. So on, on, on Zoom, do we have uh, participants from different cities or uh, from different countries? Uh, what exactly are we watching there? Okay, so this is one institution which is called International Center for Chemical and Biological Sciences, UNESCO Center in Pakistan, right. where Comstrike is sending scholars from different countries. So you see scholars from Burkina Faso, from Sudan, from Cameroon, from Nigeria, <laughs> uh, from uh, Azerbaijan, from Kazakhstan, uh, from China and other countries. So uh, these young scholars are the great strength of OIC. The CompTech is, is it assisting the exchange programs as well? We have many programs. We have about uh, 100 different initiatives uh, which we uh, carry out in different regions of the world. And one of the flagship programs of uh, Comstrike is to facilitate the mobility of younger scientists from one country to the other and provide them opportunity of working in the top class laboratories. Most certainly. And then uh, what, what about the budget allocation? Because you said, is this an autonomous organization, the uh, Comstech? Uh, in the OIC system, there are different organizations. Uh, like United Nations uh, organizations, uh, uh, OIC has lots of organizations also. Uh, Ministerial Standing Committee are the premier organization. They are among the top organizations in the OIC system. Comstock is a Ministerial Standing Committee for Science and Technology, and this is comprised of 57 ministers right. of Science and Technology, chaired by the President of Pakistan. And that gives uh, Comstock a very high stature in the OIC system. Now that's amazing, really. And while I was having a look at the, the, the um, pictures of the Nobel laureates, but I'm going to ask you that question after a while before, because you have uh, to head a meeting here, so I'll let you hold that meeting first and then we can continue with our discussion. Thank you very much. So, Asalaamu Alaikum, uh, Khuzima, how are you? How's your team? Wonderful, sir. I hope you're fine and hope you're doing well. <laughs> I wanted to know about this woman uh, in science program. We would have at least uh, 200 uh, visiting women scientists in science and technology, especially selected fields in the area of health, agriculture, energy, water, uh, to be supported by Comstrike. Uh, so the plan for next one year, as you said, is to uh, target at least providing 100 uh, fellowships to the women scientists. Mm -hmm. And our uh, preference would be given to the women scientists coming from the least developed countries. Okay. Because uh, uh, those are the people um, who... I mean, uh, Africa and Central Asia yes, and India. Yes, sir. Um, and so the countries particularly will include, as you said, um, least developed countries from the Africa like Cameroon, Chad, Nigeria, Cameroon, um, and other than that from some of the uh, Central Asian countries as well. We already have fellows uh, in our one of another uh, research fellowship program from countries like Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. They're already here. Yes, yes sir, they're already here, but in, other, uh, in another program which you already have mentioned. Uh, sir, uh, so in how many fellowship programs do we have in there? Uh, sir, in, gen, uh, in total we have five fellowship programs. Uh, one is for particularly focus, uh, focusing on virology and vaccine technologies. Mm -hmm. And other is for the, technician, for, the uh, for the technician training program. It is a short term training program uh, where we generally offer training from four to six weeks. And, uh, and another program is for the least developed countries. Uh, it includes, um, you know, we accept applications from both the males and as well as the females. And we have another program uh, which we will be uh, starting soon, uh, which will be focusing on uh, agriculture as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, these are the programs that we have. Thank you, Khazima. Uh, Haris, uh, see there are lots of uh, potential in youth. Mm -hmm. And even during COVID-19, uh, innovation by young people has made uh, their way and we can see that there are lots of innovation, there are lots of technological development uh, and we have developed this technology portal. So what is the progress of this uh, OIC technology project? Uh, so keeping in mind the progress of technology in the OIC world and globally, we have targeted uh, the audience of uh, the technology paths within the OIC country specifically for Turkey, Egypt, Malaysia, Pakistan, Tunisia, Morocco. 
and UAE and Saudi Arabia. So we've been uh, writing to them and engaging them to participate uh, with the prototypes, the research, the patents, and the commercial products or the products which can be commercialized and be beneficial uh, for the global uh, use. So scholars from different countries, I hope your work, uh, your research work and your scientific work is proceeding smoothly and that you are benefiting from uh, your business. I'm sure that your training in ICCPS would help you to work in Sudan also and to discover a new treatment of diabetes because it's very common in Arab countries and African countries. Inshallah. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Let's move on to more areas of the compound, but after a short break, stay tuned. place that we're sitting in I wasn't expecting the rooftop to be like this well so um, we were talking earlier about Nobel Peace uh, not just peace but Nobel laureates right and uh, last year I do remember reading a news item and that had your name on it when uh, um, the, the Mustafa Prize was given for scientists of the Muslim world and you were among that and not just the fact that you're striving the organization and people of this country to be a pride for the nation but you yourself was pride for Pakistan uh, could you tell us the details of that? Thank you for him uh, you see uh, I, I've been working in the field of science since last three decades right? and my focus has been largely on neglected uh, diseases mm -hmm. and uh, Last year I received a uh, Mustafa Prize, which is uh, called Nobel Prize of the Muslim World. Exactly. And this is given to the scientist who has contributed uh, in the Muslim world on uh, something which benefits humanity. Uh, and this uh, particular prize, I mean I have received many international prizes and national prizes also. This was particularly focused on the discovery of anti-epileptic medicine. Uh, epilepsy is a neurological disease, as you know that this is one of the most common neurological diseases. Unfortunately, lots of people are suffering from uh, epilepsy. This has this become a chronic lifelong disease which affects every aspect of every aspect of life. And uh, unfortunately, despite all the development, uh, there is uh, no single medicine which is available which can cure all kind of epilepsies because epilepsies are very complex. So what we have done was that we started looking into the nature and uh, we uh, decided to work on medicinal plants which people use for the treatment of epilepsy. And from uh, that uh, about 10 years long, long uh, research which we have conducted on anti-epileptic medicine plants we were able to isolate, identify and synthesize a molecule called, called ISOX. This is now internationally patented and this is considered to be one of the most potent anti-epileptic uh, agents known to humanity. This is in the final stage of development. This is the uh, second phase of clinical trial. This is uh, patented in, uh, in Europe, China and USA. And this discovery has uh, a very special meaning for me because I know many people with epilepsy, in, even in my own family also, family also. And I really want to have something which benefits uh, this large proportion of people affected from this chronic disease. 
and uh, the best part would be that not just the fact that it covers all the aspects of epilepsy but also with minimal side effects? Uh, this is a natural product isolated from a medicinal plant and people are using this medicinal plant since centuries. I so see. we assume that it's going to be safer than the existing drug. And has it been uh, tried and tested on uh, people yet? Yeah, as I said that this is in the second phase uh, clinical trial. The first phase was completed in Canada. The second phase clinical trial which uh, primarily focused on establishing the efficacy in human patient uh, is currently underway. But even before that, there were lots of work carried out on animals, on different kinds. Toxicology assessment was carried out, uh, different derivatives are made. The whole package of work which was conducted is now internationally recognized. I see. And so when can we expect this to be in the market, roughly? In I, mean, I, I assume that ISOX, if it completes the phase two clinical trials and if we are able to raise funding for the phase three clinical trial, it should be available within three to four years. That's lovely. I think it's good news for all people who have epilepsy of any kind because uh, they suffer. They suffer a lot. The, the dependency that they have to go through, so many restrictions that they have to come across in their daily activities and not being independent like they should be. So yes, I think um, I'm empathetic towards many of the people who do because uh, this is, and this is going to be a life-changing medicine for all of them. And this is something, yes, you definitely deserved that prize for this. And I'm sure it will be a magical experience for all of the people who try it later on when it comes into the market, inshallah. Also, um, while I was talking about medicines and, uh, sorry, I mean students and exchange programs, and we also saw some students on Zoom as well, um, do, I mean, how many universities are working with uh, CompTech for the exchange program students? Uh, Comstech uh, has established many networks and one of the most important networks uh, is called Comstech Consortium of Excellence and that uh, these are some of the top institutions in the Muslim world in Turkey, in Iran, in Bangladesh, in, in Malaysia as well as in Pakistan. So I would say about 50 top institutions of the OIC which are currently part of this Consortium of Excellence. And our objective is to use those institutions for the training of scholars, for, uh, for developing common research projects to work on problems which are of common nature. And uh, because eventually at the end of the day, uh, universities are the center places from where knowledge is generated. And it's all about generating knowledge and using it for the benefit of humanity. And also, are we, uh, when we say university, are we talking about research labs or are we just talking about university and university classes? Uh, in every university, uh, there, is, there are research centers and some of, them, some of them are really good. So what we have done is that uh, we, of course, universities are the members of the consortium, but among those universities, the research centers, which are of absolutely world-class uh, stature, we have put them together into a network. And we use those uh, research centers as the example of international center. We have seen that scholars from different countries are actually working there. Same in Middle East Technical University, same Shahid Beshti University in Iran, uh, International Islamic University in Bangladesh, uh, National University of Science and Technology in Pakistan. So these institutions are used and especially their best uh, s and institutions, r and institutions are the places where scholars are uh, coming for trainings and research. So uh, we're talking about research labs here, we're talking about universities here and uh, what about, uh, are we talking about the PhD level students here or are we talking about even the MPhil level students here? Uh, Research scholars can be of any, uh, you know, level. They can be from masters to PhD, even postdocs can come. 
but it, our emphasis is largely on least developed countries. And you see, 57 countries, the canvas is very wide, and we are bringing scholars from the countries where there is a real need. Uh, currently, our emphasis is on Africa because out of 26 uh, member states, OIC member states in Africa, 17 LDCs are in Africa. And we are trying to bring them on board, not only through scholarship program, but also we have initiated Health Africa program, in which we are sending uh, teams of doctors to carry out uh, health camps, uh, you know, eye camps, train them in complex surgeries such as retinal surgeries, neurologists uh, training them in neurocritical care and stroke care, uh, dermatologists are going to different places also. And Health Africa program is actually focused on four countries every year. So every year, four African countries are focused uh, and with the objective to build the capacity of their local doctors. One interesting program is that, uh, you know, in West Africa, the population of West African OIC is about 180 million. And there are only very few ophthalmologists. We're very, very fortunate in Pakistan that you can go and meet with the eye surgeon or eye specialist anytime. Yeah. anytime. But there are countries where very few ophthalmologists and eye specialists are there. So uh, with Islamic Development Bank, we are initiating the training of 100 uh, ophthalmologists in Pakistan. This is fully funded by Islamic Development Bank for their travel and their local hospitality. And our local institutions, uh, top class health institutions, are going to train them uh, as uh, in diploma in ophthalmology. So this would have a great impact because when they will go back to their countries, they will be able to serve their communities and, you know, blindness is a major problem. Uh, similarly, we have, uh, during the COVID-19, there was a strong realization that the capacity to diagnose viral disease is very, very low in Muslim countries. So we have created a network of virology laboratories and we are developing their capacity in the field of disease surveillance, disease diagnosis, reporting, uh, understanding the protocol, understanding how to carry out these technical... You were uh, in, in uh, early in the meeting, you were talking about the water problem as well. So yes, I think uh, you people are doing everything that you people can in the capacity to uh, counter all the problems, not just the health problems, but also uh, like, for example, provision of clean drinking water in Africa, many of the African countries where it's not available. Right now, um, also, like you mentioned, you uh, the virology department you've been working on. Where does Pakistan stand if you talk about the Muslim countries? The response to your question is that Pakistan uh, is uh, very fortunate to have some very good institutions and uh, highly professional uh, healthcare workers, doctors, scholars, scientists. There are some other countries also, such as Malaysia, Turkey, mm -hmm. Iran, uh, Egypt, very high quality manpower. But when you look into the whole canvas of the Muslim world, you find that majority of the Muslim countries do not have that excellence in science. And our objective is to use these uh, excellence which already exist in the Muslim world for the benefit of the others. Uh, you know, this is the spirit of Ummah, that if we wish to develop, we need to, we wish to, we need to develop together. Uh, there is no dearth of uh, talent, there are lots of bright uh, young people all over the Muslim world, and the uh, emphasis need to be on their training, on developing their skills, the providing them opportunities of learning in the top class laboratories, and then using these uh, science and technology and innovation for the socio-economic development. And this is the reason why we uh, are actually acting as a bridge between scientifically efficient countries uh, with scientifically lagging countries. And that is where COMSEC play an extremely important role. And I, I think uh, COMSEC is also playing a very a significant role where unity of the whole Muslim Ummah is concerned because uh, naturally we know the era in which we're living today there are loads and loads of conflicts even among the Muslim countries I don't want to get into politics but all I'm saying that 
maybe it will help all the Muslim countries get united on one platform, perhaps. Oh, absolutely, because science uh, is has no bounding. Uh, it it uh, has no political boundaries or ideological boundaries, and science is one something which can unite people. So when it comes to science and technology, and when it comes to solving common problems of the Muslim world, Comsec find no difficulty in bringing uh, Muslim countries together. You know, despite of their ideological differences or mm. political alliances, Comsec has been very fortunate to bring uh, bilateral, trilateral uh, arrangements of cooperation within the Muslim world. And this is a great strength of Comsec. Most definitely. And also it's very heartwarming to know that this responsibility lies on the shoulders of Pakistan because Pakistan, the overall image of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan has been trying its level best to improve that image. And I think uh, moving forward in the right direction in the field of science and technology for all of the Muslim countries of the world, this is both a responsibility and an opportunity for Pakistan, don't you think so? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think having an institution of this stature, Comstack, which is responsible of science and technology cooperation in 57 countries, give Pakistan a great political leverage. You know, it it is an, an instrument of science diplomacy also. Being in host science institution, science diplomacy, absolutely. Exactly. Being in host institution, uh, anything which we do for the Muslim world. Uh, would have a positive impact on Muslim Ummah, will be able to have uh, uh, this feeling of helping our brothers and sisters. At the same time, Pakistan get, uh, uh, you know, political dividend out of it. So, we feel that uh, being a host of such a prestigious institution, Pakistan has a great uh, advantage over others. So, uh, so, how far do you think Comstech has come in all these years and uh, how much potential do we have in order to take Comstech forward or should I say leaps and bounds forward? Comstech has a great potential and Comstech can really uh, help in, uh, in the development of the Muslim world because in today's world, uh, science, technology and innovation are the driving force and that is the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, and we know that uh, this is exactly what uh, the development model which suits the Muslim world. Intellectually driven development rather than capital development. Exactly. So, uh, we do not have money but we have lots of bright people and if we can uh, uh, we can uh, bring them at par to the international level in terms of training and education. This would help uh, uh, the Muslim world to develop. And Comstech has, you know, huge potential. What we are trying to do uh, within our limited financial means, we are trying to have those innovative uh, initiatives and programs which have a great impact. But of course, there is sky is a limit, and we feel that a lot need to be done. Uh, we feel that Comsec uh, deserves to be supported, not only by the host country Pakistan, uh, but also by the other countries also, because the uh, their contribution would uh, benefit them more than uh, more than anything. Okay, and this would magnify uh, the financial contribution in terms of the, uh, the benefits which they would draw from Comstech's initiative. How, so how active has uh, Comstech been in the last, say, five to seven years? Uh, in last two years, I would say, since uh, uh, this responsibility was given to me, we, despite the fact that there was a COVID-19, mm -hmm. we tried uh, our best to be very active, you know, we have been very active virtually, we conducted lots of training courses, workshops, we were able to move despite uh, the mobility problem, we were able to bring scholars from one country to the other, we were able to have uh, uh, funding for the research project, so in the last two years we have funded 
about 0.5 million dollars research project in developing uh, OIC countries. Uh, so, Comstrike has initiated lots of programs, and of course, uh, many of them uh, need to be magnified uh, and to include more countries and to mo include more partners. And uh, so, how much support has the government given you? Uh, and I'm talking about support in all aspects, all spheres. I would say that, uh, you know, being a host country, Pakistan has been very responsible. We're very fortunate to have full support of presidency. The president of Pakistan is the uh, chairperson of Comstech, and this gives, gives, gives us lots of leverage. Uh, this uh, is, a, is a strong point, Comstech enjoy, and there is a great understanding in all ministries and also in government circle that COMSEC is an instrument of Pakistan science diplomacy and that COMSEC is the only organization uh, only interdisciplinary uh, and that the COMSEC is the only inter international organization which Pakistan hosts and this is uh, uh, the reason that we've been very fortunate to get support from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, from Ministry of Science and Technology, from Presidency, from Prime Minister, Secretariat. In terms of financial support, Pakistan is the uh, major contributor toward, uh, towards uh, Comstack. And there are other, other countries also contributing. And in all cases, uh, whatever the contribution which it received from any member state, uh, we add on our part uh, through international uh, support and that country uh, get benefit more than what they have contributed. Lovely. And so, sir, now that Comstech is under your leadership, where do you see Comstech in the next, say, five years? Uh, I. Our objective is to primarily focus on youth right? and uh, we would like to emphasize more on their capacity building. My uh, dream is to bring as many possible... Uh, Comstec in next five years is actually focusing on key uh, issues such as water, for security, uh, health, and in all these, our emphasis would largely be on least developed countries and on youth. And that is where we want to have the greatest contribution Comstech making in the next uh, five years. We would like uh, to engage as many youth as possible. We would like to develop their capacities in emerging technologies related to these issues. We would like to help uh, member states to develop their own policies and enable them to implement those policies also. We would like uh, African countries to benefit from the excellence which exists in the Muslim countries. So overall Canvas uh, is uh, focused on developing indigenous capacities of, of OIC member states so they become capable of using science and technology innovation for the benefit of God. And like you mentioned that uh, you're focusing more on the youth, right? So uh, what if uh, a child, a student from let's say a lesser developed city in Pakistan I'm talking about comes up with, with a very innovative idea and something that would perhaps it would be a game changer. So, do you people lie with all the universities of Pakistan or what is the method of accessing you people? Comstru programs are open for everyone. You know, being an international organization, uh, anyone can apply for various uh, research grants, uh, training courses, uh, to go to other institutions where relevant work is conducted. And anyone with a bright idea can benefit from Comstock program. Of course, Pakistan being a host country is the greatest beneficiary, you know, because absolutely the case. Absolutely. And uh, we uh, have initiated youth innovation program. There is a technology portal. If anyone has a bright idea, if they have developed a prototype of a product, they can always place that on OIC technology portal, which is run by Pakistan. 
uh, by Comstrike and uh, by doing so they will be able to have uh, end users and developers they may be able to get uh, people who are willing to finance their ideas and of course Comstrike can do that to some extent also uh, but there is a mechanism in place in which technology is, uh, is linked, innovators are linked with the end users. Lovely, that's, that's lovely to know because you've made it accessible for most of the, I think all the people who are living not just in Pakistan but also in the other Muslim countries. So uh, that's, that's really, really tech today to have known about Comstech today and as far as the technology portal is concerned I would love to know whether th there is an app for it or a website for it because if, if, if it's there we would definitely like to show it to the bottom of our screen so that people can access it. This is on Comstech website uh, it is a separate domain but linked with the Comstech uh, website right. it's very easy to use and uh, the information which you place on technology portal would be viewed by people all around the globe and uh, based on that we are also planning to have a large uh, exhibition in uh, Turkey in collaboration with the Turkish partners and you know selected technologies would be displayed to, to the world so it could be anything from r and institution to individuals to companies anyone can bring those technologies and if they are really useful I am pretty confident that they would be able to find end users and people who are willing to invest in the development of those technologies. And do we have exhibitions right here? Uh, we have been organizing regularly exhibitions of uh, in last uh, one and a half years we had uh, three large exhibitions on artificial intelligence uh, in health we had exhibition on uh, COVID-19 technologies. Uh, recently, we have carried out, uh, you know, an exercise of understanding how agriculture can be, uh, you know, artificial intelligence can be used for the promotion of agriculture sector in the Muslim world. So there are a number of exhibitions which we have organized, and we are planning to organize that those in other countries as well. No, sir, it's an absolute honor to have met you today. And uh, I, if I, I mean, speak the truth, I did not know the details about Comstech. And coming here and getting to know, I think this is hugely beneficial for the youth of the country. Because today is an era where we have to be technologically sound, where we have to, it, it's a race in the world. Whoever is technologically more sound will be forward. There is extreme competition all over the world. And I think that you people are doing a great job of uh, focusing on the youth, channelizing their energies, their potential into going for something that's innovative and that would be perhaps beneficial for not just the people of this country but the entire world. Absolute honor, sir. Hopefully, we will be in touch with you and hopefully, I think uh, the electronic media should be covering Comstech and its projects more and more so that all the people who don't know about the potential of Comstech should be knowing about it, not just in English but in Urdu as well. And I'm sure that will happen because under your leadership you're taking it forward in the right direction, in a wonderful direction and I think uh, this is a chance for Pakistan to gain this and grab this opportunity and show the entire world what Pakistani youth is made up of. So, sir, thank you very much. It was an absolute honor talking to you and getting to know about Comstech and uh, which, by the way, is working beautifully under your leadership and I, I hope and I pray that it goes leaps and bounds. Thank you, thank you very thank much, Fahim. It's an honor to have you. Sir, thank you. And and thank you very much for visiting us. Thank you. So, viewers, uh, this was the visit of Comstech that we did today and I'm sure, uh, along with me, you people also got to learn something all the other about Comstech and how it works and I'm sure uh, this has been very beneficial for all the students who are studying in the universities uh, for all those people who are creative in nature who are relevant and related to sciences in any field any particularity of science I'm sure you people will g gain a lot of benefit by going to the website of Comstech uh, by using their technology portal and I'm sure something good will come out of it this is Fahim Bangish signing off. Keep watching Sky's the Limit. Keep watching BTV World for Dancers.